For the last month, we have been on an epic road trip around Turkey. We have explored the picturesque small towns, the incredible big cities, and some of the most magical landscapes that we have ever seen. We have finally made it to the historical city of Antakya, also known as the ancient city of Antioch. We had plans to spend three days in the city, but things didn't go exactly as we had planned. Stick around until the end as we discuss the unglamorous reality of traveling full-time. Well, unfortunately, the first 24 hours of our trip in Antakya was spent hiding away in our apartment, getting a lot of work done, catching up on school. But tonight we can finally escape from the apartment, get out, explore, and have some quality food. So one thing that has surprised me with our travels through Turkey is a surprising lack of hummus so far. I don't know if we just haven't been very lucky in our travels, but we have not come across hardly any hummus. Well, today that finally changes. Uh, I have heard about a very fantastic hummus shop in Antakya, and we are doing our best to find it. Yeah, Alexa, have you seen cabbage is. that big before ever in your life? What? That's crazy. It's like pumpkin sized cabbage. Look at that. Whoa. That one's so big. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let me go stand on the other side so I can get a comparison. Abi chok boyuk. Yaren. Tamam. Abi, yaren. What time? Kaç saat? Sekiz dokuz on. Tamam. It's close. It's close. <laughs> so that was gonna be our dinner, our dinner tonight. So I guess we just have to have dessert for dinner. <laughs> we definitely have to come back tomorrow for it. But isn't it an odd place to have a hummus stand? It like, very it's odd. literally just. But think about mechanics. all the hungry workers around, you know? Yeah, it's auto mechanics all the way yeah. around. Yeah, maybe it's the best business decision. Gotta love you with the words on my mouth, with the words on my hands. Even though we were pretty disappointed we couldn't get our amazing hummus, we decided to grab a smoothie, walk the streets of Antakya, and do a little bit of shopping. Good job, Nabi. Bundekadar. Oh my goodness! Whoa! Has your name on it That's now? That's amazing. What is it? It's a turtle. It's a turtle. How many years have you made hummus here? 13 years. 13 years. So they have um, lime juice storage up in the ceiling here, and then it actually comes down through the spray nozzle. And over the years, it's been dripping. It appears to have carved a little, almost a river through the marble here. Uh, this place has been around for about 13 years now and makes the best hummus in town. Mm. Wow. Mm. Mm. So they make their hummus super, super unique here. It's very heavy in uh, lemon lime juice. Um, I can't even begin to describe all of the different flavors um, that they pack into this. It's very unique, not like any hummus I've ever had before. But just to see them making it in the old fashioned way by hand with the lime juice stored in the ceiling, they would then spray into the hummus mixture. But if you're coming to Antakya, this is definitely a very unique stop to make and grab some good hummus here. So they brought us two different kinds, and one is more of a traditional hummus, and then another one has more of a peanutty taste to it. We're not sure if it's like a tahini or a sesame paste added, but it's really delicious. <laughs> a, a white van just pulled up, had a big bushel of some kind of herb passed out the window. He just ran out, picked it up, came in, took it to the back. <laughs> it's awesome. I first found out about this place by watching Dravinsky's videos, but I had um, an entertaining time of finding it. He forgot to list the name of the place, so I had to like take freeze frames of his videos and birth them to try to get little bits and pieces of the sign name, look out through the window. Then I was like spending time on Google Map and Street View looking for it. Still wasn't good enough, so then the other night I hit the streets, talked to a bunch of locals, walked around for a couple hours, finally found it. It was closed last night, came back today, absolutely worth it though. But I've just suggested a fix on Google Maps so hopefully future people will be able to find this place. Such a good stop, absolutely worth the hike out here. Definitely don't miss it if you're coming out to Antakya. 
we have come to this restaurant to have kanafe, which is a famous dessert here in Antakya. We're not exactly sure what it is, but it's made, we think, with the noodles we saw this morning that they were putting out on the spinny cooktop and that we get to try. And then here it has some kind of cream with it and a like water sugar syrup on top with a little pistachio. And we're gonna try it. Looks pretty good. I will be the Alexa first. cannot wait. So I think it has cheese and cream, and then obviously pistachio, and then she just layered on syrup. It's really good. It's really hard to explain. Like it does, it has like the sweet syrupy taste. It's like crunchy, but then it does taste like it has like cheese in the middle, but it's not savory, it's sweet. It's really good. So I read this morning that this dessert has been made for the last like thousand years, uh, mostly in the Middle East, around Palestine, I think is where it was invented. Uh, but somehow, I'm not quite sure why, but Antakya is known for the kanafe. Mm. And it's very delicious. I love seeing the noodles being made this morning. They were making, it only took about 10 seconds for a huge batch of noodles to be made with that spinning copper disc. Once the, the batter hits it, it just kind of evaporates the water and turns into a, a crunchy noodle. And then I believe that's what they make all of this out of. How are you feeling? I'm tired. We had a big day of editing yesterday and now we're trying to kind of get everything in to one day because we only have really this one day here in Takia and there's so much to see and do. So I'm feeling a little bit of the pressure of like go, go, go and I'm tired but other than that, it's a good day. It can be really hard to know how long to stay in each location. Um, we had planned for three days here, but we've just been moving too fast. Uh, had to catch up on editing, so we were really down to just one day of exploring, and it, it's just, it's not enough. It's not all eating canafe and pastries all day long. <laughs> currently in St. Peter's Church here in Antakya. And it is thought that Peter and Paul from the Bible taught here in this cave church. I'm actually getting a little more emotional than I thought I would coming in here. Um, I don't know, it's just, it's really amazing to think about the history of this city and this place and um, its significance in you know my faith in particular. I don't know. It's just it's um, yeah. I don't know. I'm a little more emotional than I thought I would be coming in here. That's what a lot of people Have you enjoyed your time in Antioch? <laughs> Talk, yeah. <laughs> I'm super bummed because this was one of the cities that I was the most excited for and we've hardly been able to do anything while we've been here. We need to come back and do it right, I feel like. We didn't have enough time. I'm the planner, I'm the one who figures out how much time we have at each destination and kind of plotting it out. And I didn't really account for <laughs> editing <laughs> in my planning. So we had to spend all day here, one of our full days here, editing. Um, and we missed out a little bit. Which takes a lot of time. <laughs> she puts in a lot of hard work. Yes, thank you. But we've loved the little bit that we've gotten to explore here. And we have a little bit more we're going to do this morning before we head to, to Tarsus. Tarsus, which I'm super excited about. Um, we're just going to do a little teeny stop there and head to Alanya. Alanya. Bye bye and talk. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you ready to go? We have done a serious number on this car. Are you buckling in Moo Moo? Uh huh. Moo Moo's nice and safe. All toys must be safe. So we have come to the museum hotel 
and this place is really special because I think just a few years ago, right Brady? Mm -hmm. So just a few years ago, they started building this hotel and as they were digging, they uncovered all of these ancient ruins. They actually continued building the hotel, but they had to change their plans and build it around all of these ancient findings. So this is a really, really cool place and it's really new. Um, everything is left where they found it, which I think is really cool. I think a lot of museums pick things up and move it and here it's all just right here where it was. You can see some of the old road, you can see some Roman baths, some things from the Hellenistic period. It's really cool to see kind of the different layers and levels of, of the ancient cities. They also found the largest intact mosaic in the whole world. So the mosaic extends all the way across the bridge to the other side of the wall there. So what I like is that you can see all of the waviness of the uh, mosaic. So this entire area was about, I'm guessing about 10 feet underground. It was all crushed by sediment that was laid down by a nearby river and then was built over top of it and centuries passed. And then all of that pressure kind of formed all this waviness in the mosaic, which looks really cool and unique. This down here was a pool. And over there, I think what, there was a cold pool. So there's two pools. Over there are warm rooms. There's one area that was, was a dressing room. This was a Roman house, so. A Roman bath? I mean, Roman bath area. That's cool. After we finished up at the museum, we hopped in the car to make our way to Tarsus. What? Wow. That's a, it, your face is messy. No, it isn't. I see. No, <laughs> you've got orange all over your face. Hold on. That is an ancient Roman road. Isn't yeah. that cool? That's so cool. Is it still used? Um, no, no, it's just to look at. Ah. It's crazy though, they uncovered that. So, considering this is Tarsus and that's a Roman road, it's pretty much guaranteed Paul would have walked on those stones. Yeah, which is just pretty crazy to think about. It's too bad you can't go and look at it. I know. Go walk on it. That's a museum. So, my guess is like it will probably be incorporated into the museum eventually. Eventually. That would be my guess. I'm pretty sure they just recently found this. How much more is just underneath the surface that has been built? A ton. On top of, like, yeah. I mean, throughout the generations. You'd have That's to I dig too. down yeah. 10, 20 feet to see everything. Yeah, which is just so crazy to think about. So we are on our way from Antakya to Alanya. Alanya? No, Alanya? no it's Antakya. That's what I said, isn't it? Antakya to... Alanya Valabolor. Alanya. <laughs> I don't know. All the names of the towns are getting to me in my head. I can't keep everything straight, but we are on our way from one place to another. <laughs> and we, we stopped are, in Tarsus. And we stopped in Tarsus. And we stopped here because I saw it on the map and I've heard of it because the Apostle Paul is from Tarsus and I thought we have to go there and we have to see this town. Been thinking about you So beautiful and lovely I wish you could see it all the way I do So pure and true We spent one night in Tarsus before heading on to explore a bit of Alanya. But before we get there, we have been driving along on this beautiful windy road and we actually drove right beside a castle on the water, which was pretty incredible. Now we have stopped at this little stand. Um, they have a, it's a little restaurant. They've got tons of bananas and they are delicious. they're very delicious. Apparently they grow a lot of bananas around here. They also have some nice little jams and honeys and things like that. It's just a, a beautiful view and a nice little stop for lunch on our way. You look funny walking around with your banana, happy in. <laughs> These are really good bananas because they make them just down the road. I saw them growing just down the road. This whole region is famous for bananas. Really? Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? This is probably gonna get cold soon. Same <laughs> Banana. You're like a little minion, aren't you? Monkey. 
monkey. <laughs> Eternity within these walls. After a quick stop for lunch, we hopped back in the car and made our way to Alanya. <laughs> So we have just arrived in Alanya. We do not have much time. We are heading to Antalya after this, but we are riding on this cable car up Pesca! to the top of this mountain. We're overlooking the beach right now. There's a castle at the top of the mountain, and we're gonna go check that out, maybe get some dinner up there, if there's options for that, and hopefully some ice cream, and then we'll head on our way. I know the hours so we are climbing up this medieval castle that was built in the 13th century. As we were driving in, you could see the entire surrounding hill is lined with castle walls. What do you see? Nothing. Can you see anything? <laughs> we have come up to the top of the mountain and we were expecting to find a castle. What we found is more of like this medieval city, which is really cool. Um, we're just kind of wandering around. We don't really know where we're going, but I'm excited to see what we find. So at this point, it would have been very easy to edit some slow motion clips to a nice song and close out the video on a positive note. But that somehow doesn't feel very honest at this point. After all, what you see on average on social media isn't a very good example of the actual reality of life. The reality is that it's easiest to pick up the camera when things are going well. And as a result, it can be easy to fall into a trap of only capturing the beautiful moments and presenting this image that everything is always great. But in reality, traveling is extremely hard, and today we are feeling it. We had big plans to explore Alanya and all it has to offer, but at this point, we had stretched ourselves too thin, pushed too hard, and our energy and attitude started to crumble. It would not be fair to our family to capture and share this, but somehow it also doesn't sit right with me, eliminating these moments because all that's then left is a highlight reel presenting a false narrative that everything in our lives is perfect. I know that when I watch other people's videos or consume social media that I sometimes get down thinking about how they always seem to be so happy and life seems so perfect for them, but I need to remind myself that what you see posted here is only the high moments. We are still learning the ropes here and would like to share honestly about what our experience is like living full time on the road. And as it turns out, selling your house and leaving your friends and family isn't that easy. And cramming four people into a small van also comes with its own set of unique challenges. And traveling internationally full time is a lot harder than what these videos might lead you to believe. But nevertheless, we love it and we feel very blessed to do what we do. We look forward to continue to share these moments here, but sometimes we have learned that the best thing we can do is to put the camera down, grab the girls some ice cream, and head back to our hotel to rest. One final note, please consider subscribing as that really does help us grow. And also consider popping over to Instagram and joining the conversation there. Thanks for watching, and after catching up on some rest, next week we will be exploring Antalya.